I want you to know where I'm coming from. I'm not here to condemn, point the finger. I'm here as your shepherd. God put me in this place. I didn't put myself here. But I share what God has given to me to help you in your everyday life, to help you walk into faith, to help you to have more faith in God, to point out scriptures that you would probably never find for yourself. Because, see, I stay in the scriptures. I read them. And when God makes them alive, then I write them down. And that's what I preach from. See, I don't just get in the Bible try to find a message. God just gives me the message as I spend time in the Word of God. Can we understand that? Now, I have in my younger days, I oh, God, i got to find a message here, you know. Oh, yeah, John 3, 16, I remember that. <laughs> but not no more. See, it, it, it just flows. It just comes. And, and see, I have uh, <laughs> stacks. See, which one do you want me to preach tonight, Lord? <laughs> But I don't want to drown you. <laughs> but I want you to know where I'm coming from is that my people perish for the lack of knowledge. I'm concerned for the body of Christ. And I want to say each and every one of you be your best in Christ. And that you develop that relationship with him. My intention as I teach the body of Christ is that your relationship with him would get deeper and more solid. That you'll be rooted and grounded in love for him and for one another. Okay? How many, see, I'm sharing my heart. How many of you know that? See, I want you to know where, where your pastor's coming from because there's times I am comical and you're probably blessed that I am sometimes. It helps to digest the food that I give you sometimes. <laughs> but see, I love you. See, I, told, I tell my daughters the same thing, all three of them. I said, Daddy loves you. And I'm instructing you and trying to teach you. Because, see, I know there's death and there's life. And if you make the mistake to live for the flesh... You're going to die. But if you make that right decision to live for the, for the Spirit and for Him who is Spirit, our God, you're going to live. See, it's not a whole bunch of decisions. It's just, it's just two. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. You're either going to serve God or you're going to serve the devil. If you serve the flesh, you're going to serve the devil because that's His territory. Do you, you follow me? So the transition that when you, as you become a Christian, I don't know, you might have been Christian for 30 years, you haven't learned that God is bringing you through a transition to where you are a person of the Spirit. And God is before you 24-7. When I go to bed, it's God. When I get up, it's God. I wake up in the middle of the night, it's God. All through the day when I'm working, I don't care what I'm doing, it's God, 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 God. And once in a while... I make a little room for Susan. Now, you might not understand that completely. Some of you probably do. But that's the type of relationship. See, God is after relationship, not just to fill us all with a bunch of knowledge. But we need knowledge to be able to grow and mature and become mature sons and daughters of God where we can have a mature relationship with the Father. I remember this one woman, and she had three kids, by the way. Her name was Rachel. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and all day, all day, it was, give me, give me, uh, 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 change my diaper, I'm hungry, and, and you know, and, uh, it breaks, breaking up the, the fuss and everything. All day. When her husband comes in, she says, please, Please communicate with me with intelligent words. <laughs> How do you know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? But, all right, church. I know you love me and I love you. And I, okay, we got our, we got our uh, everybody got it. Raise it up. I want to see if you got it. All right.
What y'all laugh at that? <coughs> okay, <coughs> let's start. <coughs> okay, we want to learn a little something about love, and I want us to read some of these scriptures, then we're going to go to uh, first, uh, first uh, Corinthians 13 and get a good idea of what love is. Because wouldn't it be something that you live all through your life and you think you love people and you don't? And you're missing out because the great two commandments that we have is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Now, if you don't love yourself, you ain't going to love your neighbor. So we've, we found that out. All right, let's look at the first one. And that's in Mark. All right, okay, salt is good, beneficial. But if salt has lost its saltness, Make sure I got the right one there. That's pretty good. How will you restore the saltness to it? Have, your, <clears throat> have salt within yourself and be at peace and live in harmony with one another. Now that last part, all of that is good, but we're zeroing in on that last part. And be at peace and live in harmony with one another. Now I want to ask you a question. Are you at peace with everybody in this fellowship? Mm. Yeah. Now, you know, God, see, God sees everything. You want to know the scripture on that? Huh? Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 13. He sees everything. Now we're not here to condemn. But sometimes we've got to stop and realize, you know, I really think more of myself than I do others. Tell it like it is, Bob. All of us do. But see, God is giving us that transition to come out of self. How many of you know self is the problem? The self-life. Read your Bible. And come into Him. And through Him, you can live. Through Him, you can love. Through Him. As that relationship with Him increases, then you can love your neighbor as you love yourself. Okay? Uh, see, love changes us. So look what it says. Number one, be at peace with each other. At home, are you at peace with one another at home? I mean, not, you know, most of that. How many of you know I'm, I, I realize we're human? See, I'm chal God's challenging us. Well, most of the time I'm in pre uh, peace with my husband. The only time we're not is when he wants to take that extra piece of chicken. I tell you, there ain't much peace in the house then. I lose my peace fast. I didn't mean to stick the fork in his hand, but that'll teach him to reach in my plate trying to get my chicken. I'll tell you that right now. I ain't putting up with that. one. no way I'm putting up with that. Right, Rick? <laughs> Be at peace with each. How many of you know that we preach the gospel of peace? Hmm? We preach the gospel of peace. That's what the gospel is. We preach the gospel of peace. God is the gospel of peace. So you might say the ratio, the more peace you have, what? The more peace. God you have. Hello? Yes. You see that? Now, well, I'm at peace with everybody in my family but one person. <laughs> Me. But many people, you understand why I say that? And you could take it off. No, I got peace with... But many people are not at peace within themselves. 
And that's why they're so miserable, selfish. And God loves them. I love them. But they are miserable. Now, if we don't get in touch with our own selves and understand what makes us click, how are we going to be the salt of the earth? Can you see that? What does it say? Salt is good, beneficial, but if salt has lost its saltness, how will you restore the saltness to it? I'll ask you another question. I'm asking myself too. Bob, yes, that's me. Have you lost your saltness? Do people want to be around you? Or when they see you, they head south. How many understands my gestures and my uh, down-to-earth communication? You understand it, don't you? That's what I'm here for. But let's just say that you say, you know, I've lost my saltness. How can I restore it? With God, all things are possible. That's why we have confession. That's why we have repentance. That's why we can come to the throne of God to receive the grace, the help, the mercy, and the salt that we need to be salty with, that when you're around me, you just get thirsty for God. Salt makes people thirsty. And you like to hang around people to make you salty? You know, back on the farm, we had these big blocks of salt. Some of you remember that with the mules and the horses. They have to have salt. You cannot live without salt. And if we're not salt, how can people live around us? And there'll be no peace. You see, I deal with families that are so out of order, totally, their kids... You take, for example, Baltimore situation. What's the problem there in Baltimore? Anybody here know what the problem is? I know what the problem is. I know exactly what the problem is. When you take the father out of the home, or you may have the father in the home, but he's vicious and mean and ornery and, and is not salty, it ruins the kids. I was dealing, we were dealing with somebody not too long ago. The mother made this woman, she was a child then about nine or ten years old, do all the work. And she got so angry and bitter and mad that her mother wasn't a mother. Her mother just gave all, her, all the load on her. And when we dealt with her, and, that, and God touched that area in her. She cried and wept. And I said, now you've got to forgive your mom. So you all are not faced with that as I am. I'm faced with this stuff every week as I deal with people. People don't even come to this church. Come and Susan and me and others in the church helps us minister to people. That one thing just... Ruined her life. And she's in deep depression. Deep depression. And you got to go back. And that's what we did. We went back. We run the tape backwards. All the way. All the way. Just think. It all went back to her mother. And we stopped. And she said, I didn't realize how much that affected me. And why I am in this depression. And let me tell you something. You gotta, the person has to forgive from the heart. So some of you might not know where I'm coming from. But I just put that out there to, to let you know that. Uh, I, see, I look at everybody here as disciples. 
You're my disciples. Jesus' disciples, I'm here to disciple you, to teach you, not only to get yourself delivered, but to help others get delivered wherever you go. Some of you have been with me in the hospital. Rick, do I minister in the hospitals? Yeah. I give out books and tracts and talk with people, give Bibles away, just talk about the Lord. I mean, just, just, and every Christian ought to do that. I'm not tooting my own horn. But if you don't toot your own horn, probably won't toot it. <laughs> because, see, there, there's a compassion in my heart for the people of God, for people that are lost. Once the light turns on, you see. You see. Either a man is going to go to hell or he's going to go to heaven. Period. So I do everything I can and snatch them out one at a time, one at a time. And I tell you what, we're having such a great time in doing that. It's just God is blessing tremendously. So be at peace with each other. But if you're not at peace with each other, what's the problem? How many of you know you've got to find a cause? Oh, we deal with the effects. No, 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 no. We've got to deal with the cause. Why isn't there peace within you first for yourself? Because if you don't have peace within yourself, listen to me very carefully, you will not have peace with others. Hello? Now, many times it might not be your fault. How can two walk together unless they agree? That unity, see, unity, within unity there is power. Within unity there is healing. Within unity there are blessings. What does God say? When I see the unity, I will what? Command the blessing. So we are to hold on to that peace and make sure that we are peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be what? Children of God. Children of God. All through the scriptures we see how important it is. Let's go to the next one. In fact, let's just read a few of these now and wash one another's feet. Well, Bob, is that for the day? Did you enjoy your feet being washed uh, by Frank the other day? Yeah, I'm looking forward to when you wash mine. <coughs> <laughs> let, let, hey, let me know or I'll make sure that, you know, I'll have my feet washed first at, how, at the house. <laughs> But see, that's, that's a, a picture of humility. Serve one another. All right, look at the next one. Love one another. John 13, 34. There it again. Love one another, love one another, love one another, love one another. All down the line. Be devoted to one another as brotherly love. Oh, that's a good one. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. What do you mean devoted? What is Devoted. What is it? What's devoted? That, that's good. Totally committed. I like that. That's good, Scott. I'm, listen, I'm your friend. I don't care what you do to me. And some of you can verify this. You can't do nothing to make me not love you. Well, how can you say that? Because God's done the work. If God hadn't done the work, I'd have sent most of you to the moon years ago. That's why I stick with people. I'm devoted to you. I prefer you over myself. Look at the next one. Honor one another above yourself. Oh my goodness. How can you do that unless God works that in our hearts? That's why we have to let him. Lord, you said in your word, it is you working in us, 
in us. See, a lot of Christians, how many sermons do you hear about God working in God's people? Not many. If you don't do this and don't straighten up, you're going to rup, rup, rup. You can't, you can't straighten up unless you first let God work in you. Hello, are you out there? When Jesus was on earth, he did nothing in his own power. He did nothing by his own will. The only thing he did is what the Father showed him to do, and he did it by the Holy Spirit. He did it by the Holy Spirit. And the church has got to learn. I don't care what kind of programs you have. That ain't going to change you. That ain't going to change me. I give up on the programs years ago. The preaching of the cross. Once we find out that we can fall in love with God and know that God loves us, he'll change us from the inside out. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature inside. But that, that new man has to grow, has to mature into manhood. <coughs> has to grow in relationship with God the Father and with one another. Did you realize when I do something for Mike, and if I bless him, you know who I'm, I'm blessing? I'm blessing Je well, myself too, but I'm really blessing Jesus. When you've done this to one another, good or bad, you've done it to Jesus. Yeah. You talk about somebody, you talk about Jesus. You loving people, you loving Jesus. <laughs> Can I be bold tonight? Might as well. Sounds like you're doing a pretty good job already. <clears throat> Bob, yes, Lord. I've noticed that, uh, as I've noticed over the years, you cry a lot what people do to you. Yes, Lord, it's, it's pretty bad what they do to me, you know. Have you ever cried about what you've done to others? I rebuke you, devil. Hello, are you out there? Ain't nobody out there, is there? Yes. Is that not true? Have you ever cried about talking about somebody, doing something mean to somebody? How many know I love you? But see, God is going to cause us to grow with that type of preaching. You'll either leave or grow. How many times have we cried? By letting him down who died for us or our mates or our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Not many times. But when you grow, you will. And, you, and this, is a, this is a characteristic of growth. <coughs> if I do something, and I don't rob banks, and I don't go out and commit adultery or fornication or throw rocks at people anymore, I don't do that no more. Do we, Scott? I'm not going to do that no more. Okay, good. <sighs> but if I do something wrong, it might be looking at something I should have looked at, and I, oh, God, forgive me. It doesn't hurt me so much that I might have sinned, but it hurts me that I dis brought displeasure to my father. See, there, there, there's, there's, now you're growing. Say, you're more concerned about his welfare. You're more concerned about not bringing displeasure to your father or to Jesus who died on the cross. And, it, and it's piercing your soul. It, it pierces you. You go, oh God, strengthen me, Lord. I want to do some things that please you, Father. See, all things are legal and but everything is not expedient, Paul says. It's not expedient. It's not necessary that you do those things. They're not really sin, but 
You don't really need to do that to have a close fellowship with God. That just, that does, that's just garbage. Develop that relationship with God. Because see, that relationship decides what type of life you're going to live and how you're going to branch out and touch other people. When I go out with Susan, <coughs> we got our tracks. We got everything we need. We are ready to evangelize. The other day that uh, we took uh, <coughs> Deborah, Oliver, and uh, Rick was with Susan and me. We, Susan took us out for lunch. Wasn't that nice of her? So I got up and I went to this table. And I told them about the... <coughs> The Campbell, they laughed, they liked that, you know, and I gave each one a track. And, and I said, I got another question. If you die right now, where would you go? And one, one woman said, to the grave. And I said, that's not what the Bible says. I says, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, it says, absent from the body, Present with the Lord. Now, what is absent from the body that's in the grave? She got up, <laughs> left. Didn't she, Rick? <laughs> What's well, okay? So I talked to the other woman. <laughs> I mean, that's good news. I mean, to know that if you quit breathing, you're with Jesus. You, that's the best deal we got. Yes. Now, we don't want the devil to take us out before our time. Do we, God? No, says, eh? God, no. that's right. That's right. <laughs> but if it happens, let the good times roll. I'll be in heaven. Man, I tell you, that excites me. I'm ready. Woo! But Susan says, you know, who am I going to scooch up with night when it's cold? I said, I'll leave my pillar here for you. I don't want that pillar. I want my. God has provided everything for his children. Everything. Now, I, there was a man that came out here. And when, when you come out here and park, cops do. And I stop by and I talk with them. I give them, you know, just like I do everybody else. This man was in his truck and I talked with him. And <clears throat> he said he was a Christian. <clears throat> and and uh, he said, I just lost my dad and mom about three months ago. And I said, but, you know, isn't it, are they Christian? Oh, yeah, they were, they loved the Lord very much. I said, that's great. I said, isn't it wonderful to know that they're with the Lord? And he stopped. He said, what? I said, yeah, they're with the Lord. And I quote the scripture. And what is it? No, what is the scripture? Second Corinthians. There you go. I thought you wanted me to quote. I've been saying it for you all to learn it, okay. Now he was shocked. He said, You mean my dad and mom's alive? I said, Yeah, they're more alive than we are. I said, You look it up in the scriptures. Man, he got happy. I was, uh, Susan back there shopping. If she ever gets lost in uh, Walmart, because I got my little cart. I drive my little cart around. But this day I didn't have my little cart. So I'm talking to the woman that checks your receipts and everything. When you leave, you know, when you come in, she welcomes you. I've been in Walmart and the people, the person, and she's there and I'm talking to her. She's a little girl, woman like this, probably about 55. So I stand by her. I said, you know the Lord, don't you? She said, yeah, yeah, I know the Lord. So I shared that scripture with her about that when your body quits breathing, you'll be with the Lord. She said, what? I said, yes, it's in 2 Corinthians chapter what? Five, verse Eight, you got it. By the way, from one to eight is all about the death and the body. And when we get rid of this tent, 
God has another body for us. Oh, you, all that is about that. It's awesome. Get in there and study that. And she said, what? I said, yeah. I said, you quit breathing. Your body goes to the ground. And if you want another scripture on that, that's powerful. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7. Powerful. The body goes back to the dust from which it has come. And the spirit goes back to God who gave it. Man, it can't get no clearer than that. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. <sighs> Powerful. And she said, you mean to tell me when I quit breathing, I'll be with you? I said, yeah. you know what she did? In Walmart. Oh, holy. I'm praying you, Jesus. I'm serious. I'm serious. So I said, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're free. See, when you're free, you know me, you're free. They got the problem. We don't. See, you get, you get, you just get that free. Hallelujah. You're so excited, you know. We had such good experience. That's the second time that happened that the, the, the person actually raised their hands, began to praise God right in Walmart. Very excited. Well, anyway. I like to get off on those little sidetracks like that. <clears throat> All right. Now let's turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I get a real good guess, according to the Amplified Bible, what love really is. It really spells it out really good. Now, <clears throat> now, you say, well, I don't have the love of God in me. Yes, you do. The love of God's been shed in our heart. How? By the Holy Ghost. We all have the love of God. But what's in the way? All right. Flesh, self. Underneath the self, flesh, is God's love. Once self gets out the way, Let's see. All right, Scott. All right, you hold, put that in your hand. That's in your hand. Now, <clears throat> you've got to do something to let God shine. I want you to hold that in your hand real tight. Just right in your hand. Just, just right. hold real tight. Hold on to it, man. Self is holding. I ain't getting rid of my dog. But you see, you got to open that hand and let self go where you can receive love. Yes. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah. But as long as we hold on and self holds on, somebody say, I like the Pentecostal church. I used to preach at Pentecostal church. Turn it loose, brother. Hold it. And some other sister says, Hold on, brother. And you go, what, what do I do? <laughs> it's simple. Open your heart. Yes, and receive. And whatever you're holding on to, grudges, whatever, fear. Fear just destroys faith. Let it go. And receive, and then nothing to it. Okay, here we go. 1 Corinthians 13, are we ready? Uh, all right, if I can speak in the tongues of men and even of angels, but have not love, uh oh, that reasoning, intentional spiritual devotion, devotion, such as is inspired by God's love for and in us, I am only a noisy gong or a clanging a cymbal. I should have brought it up here, but back there I have a cow bell. You know what a cow bell is? I used to put them on the cows, and they wandered through the woods, and you can ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. You could, you know, like Susan when she came find me, she 
takes your little thing, goes ding dong, ding dong. <laughs> hey, there you go. The other day I lost my car and I went out went like that and I put my ear out like that. Oh my goodness, way over there. <laughs> All right. See how important this message is? Love. Now the natural man does not have the goppy love, the unconditional love. The natural man is, you do this for me, and I'll do this for you. That's all in business. You see business people. Scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. That's all in the business world. That's, that's the system of the economical world that we live in. But not God's love. God's love gives unconditionally. Getting nothing back, but constantly giving. Giving, giving, giving. Let's go to the next verse. My goodness, I can't believe it. God, just 10 minutes, he got started yet. And if I have prophetic power, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose and understand all the secret truths and mysteries and process all knowledge, and if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains but have not love, God's love in me, I am nothing, a useless nobody. I want to say something here. The time area goes so fast. When you study God's creation and, and the moon and the sun and, and the gravity and the earth pit, uh, going around on its axle and moving, everything is moving. Perfect. Now I want you to hear something. If it got out just a little bit degree, the sun a little too close to the earth would all burn up. The moon, if it was a little close, would all freeze up. The tides would change. And I could go with that. But I want to show you about the situation in Baltimore. All those people that are rioting. Listen, I'm not against people. I'm for people. But I know that they are out of divine order. Their dad, and, and this is, the newscast said this, the, the, their dad is either in jail or has been shot. And those kids grow up without any father image at all, and all they are, feel is bitterness and resentment and, and, and just totally abandoned, and they have nothing to live for and no purpose. Can you understand that? Now, is, is, am I saying they're justified by doing it? No. But it's got to go back to the parents. It's got to go back to the divine order of God. Most people that come into the shield, the, what we try to do is get their life lined up with God's principles and teaching. Because I know unless they build their house upon the rock, because when they come in here, it's usually built on the sand and they're wobbly. Trouble at home, the kids, all of that. And I try to get them to get in there and teach, and teach these principles where they can get their life in divine order like the universe is. If the universe gets out of divine order, it's chaos. What do we have in our world today? Chaos. chaos. You trace it back. The home is out of order. Dad's. Or if he is home, oh, he's probably the worst case of, than the kids. And mom don't know what to do. So they end up in my office back there. When you cook, you, you, who, how many in here, who cooks cakes? You cook cake? You cook, you cook cake. Do you have principles that you use, or you just put it all together, throw it in the oven, and put the temperature on 500 and let it roll? You do it by what? Principle upon principle, precept upon precept, concept upon concept, a little of this and a little there, the right temperature, mix it all up, and it comes out beautiful, right? 
See, that's simple. That's not complicated. And people wonder why. What's going on? Why is my life so tore up? They don't listen to Pastor Bob at all. They just listen to the message, laugh at my jokes, go home, and continue to live like they live. The other day, I, I was with this sister. I told her, now this is what you got to do. See, if you want a good cake, you got to... How many knows what... You know what that is. Okay. <laughs> so, usually two months, I let them get out there and try to come back. Well, did you, did you memorize that scripture? What scripture? I said, don't you remember I, I gave you that scripture to, to memorize? And I, I, I don't remember. Okay. Hey, did you read Ephesians, that whole chapter, over and over and over every once a week? No. Now, how do you think that makes me feel? If you go to your doctor, he gives you the prescription. And you walk out and you take the prescription, <laughs> throw it away, and you go out and continue to do what you can do. You come back three months later... Do something for me, doctor. <clears throat> uh, did you uh, stop by the drugstore and, and get your prescription fulfilled and, 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 and took the medicine accordingly as I instructed you? Uh, no, I mean, I don't need, I don't believe in medicine. Well, what are you coming to me for? <clears throat> get out of here. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's the way I feel sometimes. I pray they're just coming to, to be entertained. Somebody say, I love you, Pastor Bob. Somebody if you're not smiling at me too much, you don't know how to make me out. But I love people. That's why I'm talking this way. And you know I'm right. You got kids. And this don't go there. We'll pray for you. <laughs> All right, go to the next verse. We've got to move fast. Five more minutes and you're out of here. Even if... Uh, even if I dole out all that I have to the poor in providing food, and if I surrender my body to be burnt, or in order that I may glory, but have not love, God loves it, God's love in me, I gain nothing. Can you imagine people going to church all their lives? You doing okay, Missy? You all right? Huh? If you feel like you need to go, you go now. We know what you... Okay, nobody will be offended. You're the, see, we prefer you over anything else. Okay, okay, Missy, if you, whatever you feel like you have to do. You know she's had an operation this week, so she's brave and coming. All right, look what it says. Next. All right, we're going to close right now. The next verse real quick. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Oh, kind? <laughs> Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. Oh, man. Let's camp out there. No, let's don't do that. How many in here have seen in the church people jealous of somebody else? Come on, man. That's the most sickness thing in the world, but we love them anyway. You ought to thank God you only have one gift. Just think if you had ten gifts. Like Rachel. She's got ten gifts. <laughs> Keeps you busy, doesn't it, Rachel? <laughs> All right, look. Is not boastful or vainglorious, does not displace itself haughty or display itself haughtily. Sometimes y'all pray for me. I don't know. Sometimes you might think. <laughs> anyway, next. Let's move quick. We've got three minutes there. <coughs> Bless me. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. In other words, it don't think it's it on the stick. Anybody ever met anybody that thinks they're it on the stick? Raise your hand. Yeah, it wasn't you, was it? <laughs> All right, I hope not. If it is, repent. <clears throat> it is not rude or unmanly and does not act uncommonly. Oh, boy. Love 
God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way. If you don't do it my way, I'm not going to play. For it is not self-seeking, it is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered, to it, to a suffered wrong. Oh, oh, did you hear what they said about Pastor Bob? No, what was it? They said he was bald headed. <laughs> oh, we know he's not bald headed. Put your glasses on, man. Oh, ooh, he is bald headed. <laughs> How many of you in here have got all tore up by you heard somebody saying something about you? Raise your hand. All of us, 100%. How many in here got tore up when you said something about somebody? Let's, let's, let's do that again. <laughs> I didn't look over here. How many in here got really tore up and convicted that you said something about somebody behind their back? You know, in our lifetime, somewhere in our lifetime. But we don't do that no more, do we? No, well, I'm glad to hear that. One pastor got so tired of it, says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. The next time I hear somebody that said something negative about somebody, they're going to come up here and tell us what everybody, right in front of the congregation, and tell everybody what they said. Boy, that cut that thing out. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Anyway, <clears throat> go to the next one, Willie. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevails. Next, love bears up under anything and everything that comes, is ever ready to believe the best of every person. It hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. One more time, and we'll close. Love never fails, never fades out, or becomes obsolete, or comes to the end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, now some of our other religious brothers use that verse of Scripture to say, well, tongues is not for the day because they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. And I always say, well, has knowledge passed away? No, knowledge hasn't passed away. Neither has tongues passed away. But see, they misinterpret that. It will pass away. It will lose its value and be superseded by truth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have washed us with the word of God tonight. And Lord, however we see ourselves, it's very simple, it's not complicated. We come to a loving Heavenly Father to cleanse us and to empower us now to love with the love of God that's been shed in our heart that we can say with Paul, it is the love of God that promotes me, moves me, excites me to do the will of the Father in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for that generous love that you have poured into our hearts that we love one another and take care of one another and prefer one another over ourselves and is loyal to one another. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.